I was up at our remote cabin for the weekend while my husband was off on a business trip. It was supposed to be a relaxing getaway, just me in the quiet of the woods. But things took a turn for the worse when night fell. I was getting ready for bed, just brushing my teeth and getting into my pajamas, when I heard something outside. At first, I thought it was just an animal, maybe a raccoon or a deer. But then I heard the footsteps, slow and deliberate, crunching on the gravel outside the cabin. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest as I tried to listen for any other sounds. That's when I saw them in shadows moving in the darkness, just beyond the window. I felt a chill run down my spine as I realized that I wasn't alone out here in the woods. I didn't know what to do. I was all alone, with no one around to help me if things went south. I considered calling the police, but I didn't want to make a fuss if it turned out to be nothing. So, I just sat there in the darkness, waiting and listening. The footsteps seemed to come closer, circling around the cabin as if whoever was out there was trying to find a way in. I felt a surge of panic rising up inside me as I realized that I was completely vulnerable out here in the middle of nowhere. I thought about locking the doors and windows, but I didn't want to make any noise that might give away my position. So, I just sat there, clutching the blanket around me and praying that whoever was out there would just go away. But they didn't. Instead, they seemed to be getting bolder tapping on the windows and rattling the door handle as if trying to find a way inside. I felt my heart pounding in my chest as I tried to think of what to do next. That's when I remembered my husband had left his gun in the cabin, just in case of emergencies. I knew that I wasn't much of a shot, but it was better than nothing. I quietly made my way over to the closet where he kept it, trying to keep my breathing steady as I reached for it. I grabbed the gun and checked to make sure it was loaded, my hands shaking as I tried to steady myself. I knew that I might have to use it if things got any worse, and I was terrified at the thought of having to defend myself against whoever was out there. But just as I was about to go back to the window to see if I could get a glimpse of whoever was outside, the footsteps suddenly stopped. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest as I strained my ears for any other sounds. But there was nothing. No footsteps, no rattling at the door, just the quiet of the night. I waited for what felt like hours, but nothing else happened. Eventually, I mustered up the courage to go back to bed, keeping the gun close at hand just in case. The next morning, I woke up to find that everything was back to normal. There were no signs of anyone outside the cabin, and I couldn't shake the feeling that maybe it had all just been a bad dream. But when my husband came back from his trip later that day, I couldn't help but tell him about what had happened. He was shocked and immediately called the police to report it, just to be safe. They came out to investigate, but they didn't find anything. No footprints, no signs of forced entry, nothing. It was as if whoever had been outside the cabin had just disappeared into thin air. I'll never forget that night and I'll always be grateful that I had the presence of mind to grab that gun. It might have saved my life, and I'll never take my safety for granted again. I'm an elderly man living in a retirement home, and I've seen my fair share of strange things over the years. But nothing could have prepared me for what happened one night when I was left alone in my room after visiting hours ended. As I drifted off to sleep, I felt a sense of unease settling over me, like someone was watching me from the shadows. I tried to shake off the feeling, telling myself that it was just my imagination running wild in the darkness. But then, as if on cue, I woke up to find a figure standing at the foot of my bed, their silhouette illuminated by the soft glow of the night light. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest as I stared at the intruder in shock. They stood perfectly still, their features obscured by the darkness as they watched me with an intensity that sent chills down my spine. For a moment, I was too terrified to move, too paralyzed by fear to even call out for help. But then, with a surge of adrenaline, 
I mustered up the courage to speak. Who are you? I demanded, my voice trembling with fear as I confronted the mysterious figure. But to my horror, they didn't respond. Instead, they continued to stare at me with an unnerving intensity, their presence filling the room with an oppressive sense of dread. I knew I had to do something, to take action before it was too late. With a shaky hand, I reached for the call button beside my bed, praying that someone would come to my rescue. But even as I pressed the button, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was completely alone, that there was no one out there who could save me from whatever lurked in the darkness. Minutes passed like hours as I waited for help to arrive, the figure at the foot of my bed never once moving from their spot. It was as if they were rooted to the spot, their gaze fixed on me with a chilling intensity. And then, just when I thought I couldn't take it anymore, the door to my room burst open, flooding the room with light as a nurse rushed into my aid. She found me trembling in bed, my eyes white with fear as I pointed to the figure at the foot of my bed. But when she turned to look, there was nothing there, just an empty space where the intruder had been standing moments before. I tried to explain what had happened, to tell her about the mysterious figure that had appeared in my room. But she just chalked it up to a bad dream, a trick of the imagination brought on by the stress of being alone in the dark. But I knew better. I knew that what I had seen was real, that there was something lurking in the shadows, waiting to strike when I least expected it. From that night on, I made sure to keep the lights on at all times, to banish the darkness and the things that lurked within it. I was house-sitting for my neighbor while they were away on vacation. It was a quiet neighborhood, and I didn't expect anything out of the ordinary to happen. But one night, while I was watching TV in the living room, I heard someone knocking on the front door. At first, I thought it might be a prank or maybe just the wind. But when the knocking continued, I started to feel uneasy. I hesitated for a moment, then got up to answer the door. When I opened it, there was no one there. I peered into the darkness, but the street was empty. I shrugged it off, thinking it must have been my imagination playing tricks on me. I closed the door and went back to the living room, trying to shake off the feeling of unease that had settled over me. But just as I was starting to relax, I heard the knocking again. This time, it was louder, more insistent. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I didn't want to answer the door, but I couldn't ignore it either. With trembling hands, I made my way back to the front door and cautiously opened it. Again, there was no one there. I scanned the street, but it was deserted. I felt a chill run down my spine as I closed the door and locked it securely. I tried to convince myself that it was just a prank or maybe a stray animal, but deep down, I knew something wasn't right. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me, waiting for me to let my guard down. I spent the rest of the night on edge, jumping at every sound and peering out the windows, searching for any sign of movement. But the street remained silent and empty. As the hours passed, exhaustion finally caught up with me, and I must have dozed off on the couch. But when I woke up, it was to the sound of knocking once again. This time, it was coming from the back door. My heart raced as I crept through the house, trying to stay quiet. I reached the back door and hesitated, my hand hovering over the doorknob. I didn't want to open it, didn't want to see what was on the other side. But I knew I had to. With a shaky breath, I twisted the doorknob and pulled the door open. And just like before, there was no one there. I stepped outside scanning the backyard, but it was empty. I felt a wave of relief wash over me as I closed and locked the door behind me. But the sense of unease lingered, gnawing at the edges of my mind. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was playing a cruel trick on me, or worse, that someone was watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I spent the rest of the night barricaded in the living room, the TV turned up loud to drown out the sound of my racing thoughts. 
I didn't sleep a wink, my eyes darting around the room at the slightest sound. When morning finally came, I was exhausted and frazzled. I couldn't wait to get out of the house and back to the safety of my own home. I packed up my things quickly, eager to put the night behind me. As I locked up the house and stepped out onto the front porch, I paused, glancing back at the empty street one last time. And that's when I saw it, a figure standing in the shadows across the street, watching me. My blood ran cold as our eyes met, and then, as quickly as it had appeared, the figure was gone. I didn't stick around to find out who or what it was. I jumped into my car and drove away as fast as I could, grateful to be leaving that house of horrors behind me. I was sound asleep, tired after a long day at work. Suddenly, I woke up to a faint whispering sound. At first, I thought it was just my imagination, but then I heard it again, someone whispering my name from the other side of my bedroom door. My heart started racing as I lay there in the darkness, listening intently. I couldn't make out what the voice was saying, but it sounded urgent, almost desperate. I tried to convince myself that it was just a dream, but deep down, I knew that something wasn't right. With trembling hands, I reached for my phone on the bedside table, ready to call the police if things took a turn for the worse. But as I fumbled with the buttons, the whispering stopped abruptly, leaving me alone in the silence of my apartment. I lay there for what felt like hours, too scared to move. Every creak of the floorboards, every gust of wind outside, made me jump. I kept telling myself that I was being paranoid, that there was a logical explanation for what I had heard, but I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over me. Eventually, exhaustion got the better of me, and I must have drifted off to sleep again. When I woke up the next morning, everything seemed normal, the sun was shining, birds were chirping outside, and there was no sign of anyone or anything out of the ordinary. But the memory of the whispering lingered in the back of my mind, haunting me like a shadow. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone had been in my apartment last night, watching me, waiting for me to let my guard down. I tried to push the thought aside and go about my day as usual, but every little noise made me jump. I kept checking the locks on the doors and windows, making sure that everything was secure. I even considered calling in sick to work, just so I wouldn't have to leave the safety of my apartment. But I knew that I couldn't let fear control me. I had to be brave, face whatever was out there head on. So, I forced myself to leave the apartment, to go about my day as if nothing had happened. But deep down, I knew that things would never be the same again. That night, as I lay in bed, I couldn't shake the feeling of dread that hung over me like a dark cloud. I kept the lights on, too afraid to close my eyes and risk hearing that whispering voice again. But no matter how hard I tried to stay awake, sleep eventually overtook me. I don't know how long I slept for, but when I woke up, it was to the sound of my bedroom door creaking open. My heart stopped as I sat up in bed, my eyes wide with fear. There, standing in the doorway, was a figure silhouetted against the darkness of the hallway. I froze, too scared to move, too scared to even breathe. But then, to my relief, the figure stepped forward into the light, revealing itself to be my neighbor from across the hall. She looked just as terrified as I felt, her eyes wide with fear. She explained that she had heard the whispering too, that she had come to check on me, to make sure that I was okay. We both laughed nervously, relieved to find that we weren't alone in our fear. Together, we searched the apartment, but we found nothing out of the ordinary. No signs of forced entry, no intruders hiding in the shadows. It was as if the whispering voice had never been there at all. But despite our best efforts to convince ourselves that it was just a figment of our imagination, the fear lingered. We both knew that something strange had happened that night, something that we couldn't explain. From that day on, I made sure to keep my doors locked at all times.
I'm just a stay-at-home mom, nothing out of the ordinary. My days are filled with the usual routines of taking care of the house and looking after my baby while my husband is away on business trips. But one night, something happened that shook me to my core. It was late, well past midnight, and I was alone in our suburban house. The baby monitor crackled to life beside me, the sound of my baby's cries piercing the silence of the night. I jolted awake, my heart pounding in my chest as I listened to the desperate wails coming through the monitor. Without hesitation, I leaped out of bed and hurried to the nursery, my feet barely touching the ground as I raced down the hallway. But when I burst into the room, expecting to find my baby in distress, I was met with a scene that sent a chill down my spine. He was fast asleep in his crib, his tiny chest rising and falling in peaceful slumber. Confused and more than a little shaken, I approached the crib, my hands trembling as I reached out to touch him. He stirred at my touch, but didn't wake, his breathing steady and even as he slept. I checked the baby monitor again, half expecting to hear his cries echoing through the room. But there was nothing, just a soft hum of static filling the silence of the night. I tried to brush it off as a trick of the mind, a figment of my overactive imagination brought on by the stress of being alone in the house at night. But deep down, I knew that something wasn't right. As I lay back down in bed, trying to shake off the feeling of unease that lingered in the air, I couldn't help but wonder what had caused a strange phenomenon. Was it just a glitch in the baby monitor, a harmless malfunction brought on by the wear and tear of daily use? Or was there something more sinister at play, something lurking in the shadows of our suburban house? I tossed and turned, unable to shake the feeling of dread that settled over me like a suffocating blanket. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the wind outside, sent a jolt of fear through me, and I found myself jumping at shadows in the darkness. But despite my fear, I knew that I couldn't let it consume me. I had to stay strong for my baby's sake if nothing else. With a deep breath, I forced myself to relax, telling myself that it was just my imagination running wild in the darkness. But then, just as I was beginning to drift off to sleep, I heard it again. The sound of my baby crying, echoing through the baby monitor with a desperation that sent shivers down my spine. I shot out of bed, my heart pounding in my chest as I raced to the nursery once more. But when I arrived, my baby was still fast asleep in his crib, oblivious to the terror that gripped me. I checked the baby monitor again, but there was nothing, just the same static-filled silence that had greeted me before. I tried to brush it off as a glitch, a harmless hiccup in the system that had nothing to do with me or my baby. But deep down, I knew that wasn't true. There was something in our house, something lurking in the shadows, watching and waiting for its chance to strike. With a sense of dread weighing heavily on my shoulders, I retreated back to bed, pulling the covers tight around me as I tried to shut out the fear that threatened to consume me. Hours passed, but it felt like an eternity as I lay there in the darkness, my mind racing with thoughts of what could be lurking in the shadows of our suburban house. But just as I was beginning to lose hope, the first light of dawn began to filter through the curtains casting a warm glow over the room and banishing the darkness that had plagued me all night. Relief flooded through me as I realized that the worst was over, that whatever had been haunting our house had retreated back into the shadows where it belonged. With a sense of gratitude, I drifted off to sleep, the sound of my baby's peaceful breathing filling the room as I finally succumbed to the embrace of slumber. When I woke up the next morning, the events of the previous night felt like nothing more than a distant dream a hazy memory that I couldn't quite grasp. But deep down, I knew that it had been real, that something had been watching me from the shadows, waiting for its chance to strike. And though I may never know what truly happened that night, one thing is for certain, I will never forget the terror that gripped me as I lay alone in the darkness. It was just another quiet evening in our rural farmhouse. My wife and I were enjoying a peaceful night at home, 
savoring the tranquility of the countryside. But then, out of nowhere, we heard it, a faint but unmistakable sound coming from the depths of the house. At first, we tried to ignore it, chalking it up to the creaks and groans that old houses tend to make. But as the minutes passed, the noise grew louder and more persistent. It sounded like someone was moving around down there, shuffling and scraping against the floorboards. With a sense of unease gnawing at us, we exchanged a worried glance before mustering up the courage to investigate. Slowly, cautiously, we made our way to the basement door, our hearts pounding in our chests. To our horror, we found the door wide open, gaping like a hungry mouth into the darkness below. We were certain we had locked it earlier, so the sight sent a shiver down our spines. With trembling hands, I reached for the light switch and flicked it on, illuminating the stairway leading down into the basement. The light revealed nothing but empty space, but the feeling of dread lingered in the air like a thick fog. Summoning all our courage, we descended the stairs, each creak of the wooden steps echoing loudly in the silence. As we reached the bottom, we scanned the dimly lit room, searching for any sign of intruders. But aside from the usual clutter, old furniture, stacks of boxes, and cobwebs clinging to the walls, there was nothing out of the ordinary. No signs of forced entry, no indication that anyone had been down here. Confused and on edge, we exchanged nervous glances, unsure of what to do next. Should we call the police? Or was it just our imaginations playing tricks on us? As we stood there, grappling with our fear and uncertainty, the noise suddenly started up again, louder this time, more insistent. It sounded like footsteps, heavy and deliberate, echoing through the darkness. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I realized that we were not alone in the basement. Someone, or something, was down here with us, lurking in the shadows. Heart pounding, I called out, my voice trembling with fear. Who's there? But there was no response, only the sound of footsteps drawing closer, closer. In a panic, we scrambled back up the stairs, desperate to escape whatever lurked below. I slammed the basement door shut behind us, locking it securely this time, but the sense of dread lingered like a dark cloud over our heads. We debated whether to call the police, but without any evidence of a break-in, we knew they wouldn't take us seriously. And besides, what could they do? We were on our own out here in the middle of nowhere. For the rest of the night, we huddled together in our bedroom, too terrified to sleep, listening intently for any more signs of intruders. But aside from the occasional creak of the floorboards and the howling of the wind outside, the house remained silent. Morning finally dawned, casting a pale light into the room and dispelling some of the darkness that had gripped us during the night. With a sense of relief, we ventured downstairs, half expecting to find the basement door wide open again. But to our surprise, everything seemed normal. The door was still locked, and there were no signs of anyone or anything having been down there. As the day wore on, we tried to put the events of the previous night behind us, chalking it up to our imaginations running wild. But deep down, we couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. To this day, we still don't know what happened that night, whether it was a prowler, an animal, or something more sinister. I had just finished another exhausting day at the office, and all I wanted was to get back to my condo and collapse into bed. As I stepped into the elevator and pressed the button for my floor, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. But that feeling didn't last long. As the elevator began its ascent, I caught a glimpse of movement in the reflection of the doors. At first, I thought it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, but when I looked closer, I saw a figure standing behind me, lurking in the shadows of the elevator. My heart skipped a beat as I spun around, but there was no one there. I told myself that I was just tired, that I was seeing things, but deep down, I knew that something wasn't right. 
I tried to shake off the feeling of unease as the elevator continued its slow climb, but the image of that mysterious figure lingered in the back of my mind. I kept glancing over my shoulder, half expecting to see them standing there, watching me. When the elevator finally reached my floor, I practically sprinted out, eager to escape the confines of the small space. But as I stepped into the hallway, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being followed. I fumbled with my keys, my hand shaking as I tried to unlock the door to my condo. Every creak of the floorboards, every gust of wind outside, made me jump. I felt like a trapped animal, cornered and vulnerable. Finally, I managed to get the door open and practically threw myself inside, slamming it shut behind me. I leaned against the door, gasping for breath, my heart pounding in my chest. I told myself that I was just being paranoid, that there was a logical explanation for what I had seen. But as I stood there in the darkness of my condo, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was terribly wrong. I spent the rest of the night on edge, jumping at every little noise, every shadow that flickered across the walls. I tried to distract myself with work, with TV, with anything to take my mind off of what had happened, but it was no use. As the hours dragged on, I grew more and more exhausted, but I was too afraid to fall asleep. I kept replaying the events of that night in my mind, trying to make sense of what I had seen. When morning finally came, I felt like a wreck, tired, frazzled, and on edge. I knew that I couldn't go on like this, that I had to do something to put my mind at ease. I decided to talk to the building manager, to see if there had been any reports of suspicious activity in the building. But when I mentioned what had happened in the elevator, he just looked at me like I was crazy. He assured me that there was nothing to worry about, that it was probably just a glitch in the security camera system. But deep down, I knew that wasn't the case. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that someone was out there, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. It was supposed to be a peaceful weekend getaway, a chance to escape the chaos of my job as a nurse and recharge in the solitude of a remote cottage. Nestled deep in the countryside, surrounded by nothing but trees and silence, it seemed like the perfect retreat. But on the second night, as I lay in bed listening to the soft patter of rain against the window, I heard it, a faint tapping, like someone tapping their fingernails against glass. At first, I dismissed it as just the sound of the rain, but when it persisted, I couldn't ignore it any longer. Curiosity mingled with apprehension, I dragged myself out of bed and made my way to the window. Peering out into the darkness, I half expected to see a branch tapping against the glass in the wind. But what I saw chilled me to the bone. There, illuminated by the dim light from inside, was a face, a pale, ghostly visage staring back at me with empty eyes. My heart leaped into my throat, and I stumbled back in shock, my mind racing with fear. For a moment, I stood frozen in place, unable to tear my eyes away from the haunting sight outside. But then, with trembling hands, I mustered up the courage to pull back the curtain and investigate. To my horror, there was nothing there, just the empty darkness of the night the rain still falling steadily against the window pane. I blinked, convinced that I must have imagined it, but the memory of that chilling face lingered in my mind like a nightmare. Shaken but determined to prove to myself that it was just my imagination, I stepped outside into the cool night air. The rain soaked through my clothes, plastering my hair to my face, but I barely noticed as I scanned the area around the cottage for any sign of intruders. But aside from the rustle of the trees in the wind, there was nothing, no footsteps, no whispers, nothing to indicate that anyone else was there. I felt a surge of relief wash over me, convincing myself that I had just been spooked by the darkness and the rain. But as I turned to go back inside, I heard it again, the tapping, louder this time, more insistent. My blood turned to ice in my veins as I realized that the sound was coming from behind me, from the window of the cottage. Heart pounding, I slowly turned around, 
half expecting to see the face staring back at me once more. But to my relief and growing horror, there was nothing there, just the empty darkness of the cottage interior. With a sense of mounting dread, I crept closer to the window, my pulse pounding in my ears. And then, as I peered through the glass, I saw it, a figure lurking in the shadows, its features obscured by the darkness. Adrenaline surged through my veins as I stumbled back in shock, my mind racing with fear. Who, or what, was out there, watching me from the darkness? And why had they chosen me as their target? With trembling hands, I fumbled for my phone, desperate to call for help. But as I dialed 911, I realized with a sinking feeling that there was no signal out here in the wilderness, no way to reach the outside world for help. Panic rising in my chest, I stumbled backwards, my mind racing with fear and uncertainty. Should I stay and confront whatever was out there, or should I flee into the night and hope to escape whatever horrors awaited me? In the end, instinct took over, and I turned and ran, my heart pounding in my chest as I fled into the darkness. The rain soaked through my clothes, stinging my eyes and obscuring my vision, but I didn't stop until I had reached the safety of the nearest town. To this day, I still don't know what, or who, was lurking outside the cottage in the woods. I'm house-sitting for a colleague while they're on sabbatical, and let me tell you, this place gives me the creeps. It's a sprawling Victorian mansion, old and creaky, with more rooms than I know what to do with. The first night was uneventful, but last night, last night was something else. I was sitting in the living room, grading papers, when I heard it footsteps echoing through the empty halls. At first, I thought it was just my imagination, but then I heard the unmistakable sound of a door slamming shut somewhere upstairs. I froze, my heart pounding in my chest. I told myself it was just the house settling, that old buildings make all sorts of weird noises, but deep down, I knew that wasn't the case. I debated whether to investigate or just pretend like nothing happened and go back to my work. But curiosity got the better of me, and I found myself creeping up the stairs, my footsteps echoing through the silent house. Every creak of the floorboards, every gust of wind rattling the windows, sent shivers down my spine. I felt like I was being watched, like there was something lurking in the shadows, waiting to pounce. I made my way down the dimly lit hallway, my heart racing with each step. As I reached the top of the stairs, I saw a door standing wide open at the end of the hallway, a faint light spilling out from within. I approached cautiously my hand trembling as I reached out to push the door open further. What I saw inside made my blood run cold. The room was empty, but there was a chill in the air that sent goosebumps racing across my skin. I could feel ice pouring into me from every corner of the room, watching my every move. I wanted to run, to get out of there as fast as I could, but something kept me rooted to the spot. I felt like I was being drawn in, like there was something in that room that wanted me there. I mustered up every ounce of courage I had and stepped inside, my heart pounding in my chest. The air grew colder with each passing second, and I could feel the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end. And then, just as suddenly as it had started, it stopped. The footsteps, the slamming doors, all of it, it was like it had never happened. I stood there for a moment, trying to catch my breath trying to make sense of what had just happened. I wanted to leave, to get out of there and never look back, but something compelled me to stay. I couldn't shake the feeling that there was something in that house, something dark and sinister, lurking just out of sight. I spent the rest of the night on edge, jumping at every little noise, every shadow that flickered across the walls. I tried to convince myself that it was all just my imagination, that there was a rational explanation for what had happened, but deep down, I knew that wasn't the case. When morning finally came, I couldn't get out of there fast enough. I packed up my things and practically ran out the door, vowing never to set foot in that house again.
I'm a police officer in a small town apartment complex. After a late shift, I return home, exhausted and ready to unwind. The night is quiet as I enter my apartment, the only sound the soft hum of the air conditioning. As I settle in for the night, I hear something strange, the sound of someone trying to pick the lock on my front door. My heart skips a beat as I freeze in place, listening intently to the rhythmic clicks and scrapes coming from the other side. Instinct kicks in, and I reach for my gun, my hand shaking slightly as I prepare for the worst. I'm trained for situations like this, but nothing can fully prepare you for the fear that grips you when danger lurks just outside your door. With adrenaline coursing through my veins, I creep toward the door, careful to make as little noise as possible. Every creak of the floorboards feels like an eternity as I inch closer to the source of the sound. Finally, I reach the door, my heart pounding in my chest as I steel myself for what lies on the other side. With a deep breath, I throw open the door, my gun raised and ready to fire. But to my surprise, there's no one there. The hallway is empty, the only evidence of the intruder's presence the faint scrape marks on the lock. Confused and more than a little shaken, I step into the hallway, my eyes scanning the area for any sign of movement. But there's nothing, just the eerie silence of the night. I check the lock, confirming that it's secure before retreating back into my apartment, my mind racing with questions. Who would try to break into my home, and why? As I ponder the possibilities, a sense of unease settles over me like a heavy blanket. The thought of someone lurking just outside my door fills me with a creeping dread, and I find it hard to shake the feeling that I'm being watched. But despite my fear, I know that I can't let it consume me. I'm a police officer, trained to handle situations like this with calm and composure. With a deep breath, I force myself to relax, telling myself that it was just a random act of vandalism or perhaps a mistake. But deep down, I know that it was something more, something sinister lurking just beyond the edge of my vision. For the rest of the night, I keep a close eye on my surroundings, my senses heightened as I wait for any sign of trouble. But the night passes without incident, and soon, the first light of dawn begins to filter through the windows, banishing the darkness that had plagued me all night. I'm an artist, and I often find myself working late into the night in my studio loft. There's something about the quiet darkness that inspires me, the way the shadows dance across the canvas, breathing life into my creations. But lately, I've been feeling like I'm not alone in the studio. It's a subtle feeling, a prickling at the back of my neck that sends shivers down my spine. At first, I brush it off as my imagination running wild in the silence of the night. But as the feeling persists, I can't shake the sense that someone, or something, is watching me. I try to focus on my work, losing myself in the swirls of paint and the rhythmic strokes of my brush. But every now and then, I catch movement out of the corner of my eye, a fleeting glimpse of something, or someone, lurking just beyond the edge of my vision. It's unnerving to say the least, but I try to push the feeling aside, telling myself that it's just my mind playing tricks on me in the darkness. But then, one night, as I'm hunched over my canvas, lost in the flow of creation, I feel it, a presence in the room, heavy and oppressive, like a weight pressing down on my chest. I freeze, my heart pounding in my chest as I slowly turn around, expecting to see someone, or something, standing in the doorway. And there he is, a figure, tall and shadowy, framed against the dim light of the hallway. For a moment, our eyes meet, and I'm paralyzed with fear, unable to move or speak. But then, in the blink of an eye, he's gone, disappearing into the darkness as if he was never there at all. I'm left standing there, trembling and alone, the echoes of his presence lingering in the air like a ghost. I try to convince myself that it was just a trick of the light, that there's no one else in the studio with me. But deep down, I know the truth, I'm not alone, and whatever, 
or whoever is watching me is not of this world. Terrified, I gather my courage and make my way to the door, my heart pounding in my chest as I peer out into the hallway. But there's no one there, just the empty expanse of the studio, bathed in darkness. I want to run, to flee from this place and never look back. But something holds me back, a nagging sense of curiosity that compels me to stay and confront whatever, or whoever, is haunting me. With trembling hands, I reach for my phone, my fingers fumbling as I dial 911, my voice shaking as I explain the situation to the operator on the other end. Within minutes, the police arrive, their voices echoing through the studio as they search for any sign of the intruder. But they find nothing, no trace of the man who was standing in the doorway, no evidence that anyone else was ever here. I am left feeling shaken and vulnerable, my sense of safety shattered by the encounter. But as the police reassure me that they'll increase patrols in the area, I feel a glimmer of hope, maybe, just maybe. I'll be able to put this nightmare behind me and move on with my life. I've always loved cooking. There's something therapeutic about chopping vegetables, stirring sauces, and creating delicious meals from scratch. So when I got the opportunity to spend a weekend alone in a cozy mountain cabin to test out recipes for an upcoming menu, I jumped at the chance. The cabin was nestled deep in the heart of the mountains, surrounded by towering pine trees and breathtaking views of the wilderness. It was the perfect setting for a culinary adventure, far away from the hustle and bustle of city life. The first day passed without incident. I spent hours experimenting in the kitchen, trying out new flavor combinations and techniques. But as the sun began to set and darkness descended over the mountains, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled over me like a heavy blanket. I chalked it up to my overactive imagination, the product of spending too much time alone in the wilderness. But as I prepared to turn in for the night, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, as if someone, or something, was lurking just beyond the edge of the forest. That night, as I lay in bed listening to the sounds of the forest outside, I heard it, the unmistakable sound of pots and pans clanging together in the kitchen. At first, I dismissed it as just the wind or a trick of my imagination, but as the noise grew louder and more persistent, I couldn't ignore it any longer. Heart pounding in my chest, I crept out of bed and made my way to the kitchen, my footsteps echoing loudly in the silence of the cabin. The door creaked open, and I peered inside, half expecting to see an intruder rummaging through my pots and pans. But to my horror, the kitchen was empty, the only sound the faint hum of the refrigerator and the soft patter of rain against the windows. I blinked, convinced that I must have imagined it, but the memory of those clanging pots and pans lingered in my mind like a bad dream. Shaken but determined to prove to myself that it was just my imagination, I searched the kitchen from top to bottom, checking every cupboard and drawer for any sign of an intruder. But aside from the usual assortment of cooking utensils and ingredients, there was nothing out of the ordinary. I tried to convince myself that it was just the wind or a trick of my mind, but deep down, I knew that something wasn't right. With a sense of growing unease, I returned to bed, but sleep eluded me, my mind racing with fear and uncertainty. The next day, I tried to put the incident out of my mind and focus on my cooking. But as the day wore on and night fell once again, the feeling of unease returned, stronger than ever. That night, as I lay in bed, I heard it again, the sound of pots and pans clanging together in the kitchen. This time, there was no mistaking it, the noise was loud and clear, echoing through the cabin like a death knell. Heart pounding in my chest. I forced myself to get out of bed and investigate. But as I reached the kitchen door, a sudden sense of dread washed over me, like a wave crashing against the shore. With trembling hands, I pushed open the door and stepped inside, half expecting to come face to face with some unseen intruder. But once again, the kitchen was empty, the only sound the soft hum of the refrigerator and the distant howl of the wind. I searched the kitchen from top to bottom, 
desperate for any sign of an intruder, but there was nothing, no sign of forced entry, no footprints in the mud outside, nothing to indicate that anyone else had been there. With a sinking feeling in the pit of my stomach, I realized that I was alone in the cabin, surrounded by nothing but darkness and the echoing sound of my own footsteps. Terrified but determined to get to the bottom of the mystery, I resolved to stay awake until morning, keeping watch over the cabin and waiting for any sign of the intruder's return. But as the night dragged on and sleep continued to elude me, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that something sinister was lurking just beyond the edge of the forest, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Exhausted and afraid, I spent the rest of the night huddled in bed, listening to the sounds of the forest outside and praying for the first light of dawn to break through the darkness. And when morning finally came, I packed my bags and fled the cabin, desperate to escape whatever unseen horror lurked within its walls. To this day, I still don't know what, or who, was responsible for the mysterious clanging pots and pans in the kitchen. I work as a librarian, and I love my job. But lately, something strange has been happening to me, something that's left me feeling terrified and alone in my own home. It all started a few weeks ago, when I received the first letter. It was addressed to me, handwritten in neat, looping script. At first, I didn't think much of it, maybe it was just a letter from a friend or a family member. But as I read through it, my blood ran cold. The letter detailed intimate details of my daily life, what I ate for breakfast, or I went for my morning walk, even the book I checked out from the library that day. It was as if someone had been watching me, following me around and taking notes on everything I did. At first, I tried to convince myself that it was just a prank, that someone was playing a sick joke on me. But as the days went by and more letters arrived, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that settled over me like a dark cloud. I confronted my neighbors, hoping that maybe one of them had seen something or heard something that could help explain what was happening. But to my horror, they all denied sending the letters, claiming that they hadn't seen or heard anything out of the ordinary. I didn't know what to do. I felt like I was losing my mind, like I was being watched and stalked by some unseen predator lurking in the shadows. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't focus on anything other than the letters and the terrifying realization that someone was out there, watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the curtains, sent shivers down my spine, and I found myself jumping at the slightest sound, my heart pounding in my chest like a drum. I tried to reach out to the police, hoping that maybe they could help me figure out who was behind the letters. But without any concrete evidence or proof of wrongdoing, there was little they could do to help. So I was left alone, trapped in my own home, with nothing but the letters and my own fear for company. I tried to ignore them, to pretend like they didn't exist, but they haunted me day and night, a constant reminder that I was not safe, that no matter where I went or what I did, someone was always watching, always waiting. And then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, the letters took a darker turn. They started to threaten me, to taunt me, promising that they knew where I lived, that they knew every move I made and every thought I had. I was terrified, paralyzed with fear, unable to escape the suffocating grip of the letters and the unseen menace lurking behind them. I didn't know who to turn to or where to go for help, and I felt like I was running out of options, running out of time. But just when I thought all hope was lost, I received a breakthrough. A neighbor had installed security cameras outside their house, and they had caught someone leaving the letters on my doorstep. The police were able to track down the culprit, a disturbed individual with a history of stalking and harassment. They were arrested and charged with multiple counts of harassment, and I was finally able to breathe a sigh of relief, knowing that I was safe from harm. It took me a long time to recover from the trauma of the experience, to feel safe in my own home again. But with the support of my friends and family, I was able to put the ordeal behind me and move on with my life.
I'm a stay-at-home dad, and this weekend, it's just me and the kids at this remote cabin while my wife is off visiting family. Last night, something happened that still has me shaking. I woke up to the sound of footsteps in the hallway. At first, I thought it was just one of the kids wandering around, but when I looked at the clock, I realized it was way too late for them to be up. I sat up in bed, my heart pounding in my chest, and that's when I saw them, my two children standing at the foot of the bed, staring at me with blank expressions. I called out to them, but they didn't respond. They just stood there, unmoving, their eyes fixed on me with an intensity that sent chills down my spine. I tried to shake it off, to tell myself that they were just sleepwalking or something, but something about the whole situation felt off. I reached out to touch them, to see if they were okay, but when my hand brushed against their skin, it was like touching ice. They were freezing cold, even though the cabin was warm. I tried to wake them up, to snap them out of whatever trance they were in, but nothing worked. It was like they were completely disconnected from reality, like they were somewhere else entirely. I didn't know what to do. I felt completely helpless completely at the mercy of whatever was happening to my children. I sat there for what felt like hours, watching them, waiting for them to snap out of it. But they just stood there, staring at me with those empty eyes. Eventually, exhaustion got the better of me, and I must have dozed off because when I woke up again, it was morning, and the kids were back in their beds, sleeping peacefully. I wanted to believe that it was all just a bad dream, that none of it had actually happened, but deep down, I knew that wasn't the case. There was something in that cabin with us last night, something dark and sinister, and I couldn't shake the feeling that it was still there, lurking just out of sight. I spent the rest of the weekend on edge, jumping at every little noise, every shadow that flickered across the walls. I wanted to leave, to get out of there and never look back, but I couldn't shake the feeling that whatever had happened to my children wasn't over yet. When my wife finally came back, I told her everything that had happened, but she just brushed it off, saying it was probably just a bad dream or something. But I know what I saw, what I experienced, and I can't shake the feeling that there's something in that cabin, something dark and malevolent, waiting for the perfect moment to strike again. I don't know if we'll ever go back to that cabin again. I live in a shared apartment with my roommates, and this weekend, I found myself home alone. It's not unusual, my roommates often have plans or go out of town, leaving me to fend for myself. I was in the shower when it happened. The sound of water cascading down filled the bathroom, drowning out the world beyond the curtain. That's when I heard it, a whisper, soft and barely audible, coming from the other side of the bathroom door. At first, I thought it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, the sound of the water mingling with the silence of the apartment. But then I heard it again, my name, whispered in a voice that sent shivers down my spine. I froze, the hairs on the back of my neck standing on end as I strained to listen. But the whispering had stopped, leaving nothing but the steady drumming of the shower to fill the silence. I tried to brush it off telling myself that it was just the creaks and groans of an old apartment building settling into the night. But deep down, I knew that something wasn't right. I hurried through my shower, my heart pounding in my chest as I stepped out onto the tiled floor. I listened intently, but there was nothing, no whispering, no sound of movement from beyond the bathroom door. I wrapped a towel around myself and tiptoed out into the hallway my senses on high alert as I scanned the dimly lit apartment for any sign of intruders. But everything seemed normal, the living room was empty, the lights casting long shadows across the floor as they flickered in the darkness. I tried to convince myself that I was just being paranoid, that there was no one else in the apartment with me. But as I made my way to my room, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that lingered in the air. I locked the door behind me and climbed into bed, pulling the covers up tight around me as I tried to push the events of the evening out of my mind. But as I lay there in the darkness, 
My thoughts kept returning to the whispering in the bathroom. Who could it have been? And why were they calling my name? I tried to tell myself that it was just a prank, that one of my roommates was playing a trick on me. But deep down, I knew that it was something more sinister, something that I couldn't explain away with logic or reason. I tossed and turned, unable to shake the feeling of dread that settled over me like a suffocating blanket. Every creak of the floorboards, every rustle of the wind outside, sent a jolt of fear through me, and I found myself jumping at shadows in the darkness. But despite my fear, I eventually drifted off to sleep, the exhaustion of the day catching up with me at last. I woke with a start, the sound of footsteps echoing through the apartment. I lay there in the darkness, frozen with fear as I listened to the sound of someone moving around outside my room. I wanted to scream, to call out for help, but fear held me paralyzed, my voice stuck in my throat as I waited for whatever was out there to make its move. But then, just as suddenly as it had started, the footsteps stopped, replaced by an eerie silence that hung heavy in the air. I lay there for what felt like hours, too afraid to move, too afraid to even breathe as I waited for the dawn to break and chase away the darkness. And then, finally, as the first light of dawn filtered through the blinds, I summoned the courage to get out of bed and investigate. I crept out into the hallway, my heart pounding in my chest as I scanned the apartment for any sign of intruders. But there was nothing, no one hiding in the shadows, no sign of forced entry or foul play. It was as if the events of the night before had never happened, leaving me to wonder if it had all been just a nightmare. But deep down, I knew the truth. I had been targeted by someone, someone who had been watching me from the shadows, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I called the police and reported the incident, but without any evidence or witnesses, there was little they could do. I rented this secluded cottage in the woods to focus on my writing, to find inspiration in the peace and quiet of nature. But last night, something happened that shook me to my core, something that I still can't quite explain. It was late, well past midnight, and I was sitting at my desk, lost in the world of my novel. That's when I heard it, the sound of footsteps on the stairs leading up to the attic. At first, I brushed it off as my imagination playing tricks on me, but then I heard it again, louder this time, more distinct. My heart pounding in my chest, I slowly made my way to the staircase, my hand trembling as I reached for the banister. With each step I took, the sound of the footsteps grew louder, echoing through the silent house like a drumbeat. I reached the top of the stairs and pushed open the door to the attic, my breath catching in my throat as I peered into the darkness. And that's when I saw him, a strange man standing in the shadows, his eyes gleaming in the dim light. For a moment, we just stood there, staring at each other in silence. And then, without a word, he turned and disappeared into the darkness, leaving me alone in the attic, my heart racing, my mind spinning with fear and confusion. I didn't know what to do. Should I call the police? Should I pack up and leave? But before I could make a decision, I heard the sound of footsteps again, this time coming from the stairs leading down to the main floor. My heart in my throat, I crept down the stairs, my eyes scanning the darkness for any sign of movement. And that's when I saw him, the same man, coming down from the attic, his footsteps echoing through the silent house like a death knell. I knew I had to get out of there, to escape before it was too late. With trembling hands, I grabbed my phone and my keys, my heart pounding in my chest as I made my way to the front door. But just as I reached for the handle, I heard a voice behind me, the man's voice, cold and menacing, sending chills down my spine. Where do you think you're going, he said, his words dripping with malice. I didn't answer. I didn't dare to turn around. I just grabbed the handle and flung the door open, running out into the night, my heart racing, my breath coming in ragged gasps. I didn't stop running until I reached the main road, where I flagged down a passing car and begged the driver to take me to the nearest police station. 
I told them everything, about the cottage, about the strange man in the attic, about the terror that had consumed me. The police launched an investigation, but they never found any sign of the man or any evidence that he had ever been there. Some of them even suggested that I had imagined the whole thing, that it was just a figment of my overactive imagination. But I know what I saw. I know what I heard. And I'll never forget the fear that consumed me that night. Living alone in a studio apartment can be peaceful, but sometimes it gets lonely. Last night, I was awakened from a deep sleep by the sound of knocking on my door. It was the middle of the night, and I couldn't imagine who would be visiting at such an hour. I crockily got out of bed and stumbled to the door. Peering through the peephole, I saw a figure standing outside, a man wearing a mask. My heart skipped a beat as fear shot through me. Who was this person, and what did they want from me? Despite my apprehension, I cautiously unlocked the door and cracked it open slightly, keeping the chain lock in place. The man in the mask stood there, his features obscured by the darkness and the mask he wore. He spoke in a low, gravelly voice, his words barely audible over the pounding of my heart. He said he needed help, that he was lost and confused, and that he needed to come inside. But something about his demeanor set off alarm bells in my mind. There was a sense of menace in the air, a feeling that made my skin crawl and my instinct scream at me to stay away. I told him that I couldn't help him, that he needed to leave, but he refused to take no for an answer. He grew more insistent, banging on the door and demanding to be let in. Terrified, I slammed the door shut and locked it, my hands shaking as I backed away. I didn't know what to do. I was alone, with no one to turn to for help. For what felt like hours, I sat huddled in my apartment, listening to the sound of the man pounding on the door and shouting threats at me from the other side. But eventually, the noise stopped, replaced by an eerie silence that hung heavy in the air. I cautiously approached the door and peered through the peephole, but the man was gone, vanished into the night without a trace. I breathed a sigh of relief but the fear lingered, gnawing at the edges of my mind as I tried to make sense of what had just happened. I called the police and reported the incident, but there was little they could do without any evidence or leads. They advised me to stay inside and lock my doors, and to call them immediately if the man returned. I spent the rest of the night on edge, jumping at every sound and casting nervous glances at the door. Sleep was out of the question, every time I closed my eyes, I saw the man's masked face looming in the darkness, his threats echoing in my mind. When morning finally came, I felt a sense of relief wash over me. The light of day brought with it a renewed sense of safety, and I vowed never to answer the door to strangers again. But as the days passed, the memory of that night lingered, haunting me like a shadow that refused to fade. I couldn't shake the feeling that the man in the mask was still out there watching and waiting for his chance to strike again. I installed extra locks on my door and invested in a security system, but the sense of unease never truly went away. Every time I heard a noise outside my apartment or caught a glimpse of a shadowy figure in the darkness, my heart would race and my palms would grow clammy with fear. But despite my fears, life went on. I continued with my studies, went to work, and tried to put the events of that night behind me. Months passed without incident, and I began to relax, telling myself that the man in the mask was nothing more than a figment of my imagination, a nightmare brought to life by fear and paranoia. What do you think? I was alone in this empty house, showing it to potential buyers. The place felt eerie, but I brushed it off as just my imagination running wild. As I walked through the rooms, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. Then, I heard it the sound of children laughing and playing. 
It sent shivers down my spine because I knew the house was supposed to be vacant. I tried to tell myself that it was just the wind or the creaking of the old floorboards, but deep down, I knew that wasn't the case. The laughter seemed to be coming from all around me, echoing through the empty rooms and corridors. It sounded so real, so vivid, that I couldn't ignore it. I hesitated, unsure of what to do. Part of me wanted to run out of there as fast as I could, but another part of me knew that I had a job to do. I had to show this house to potential buyers, no matter how creepy it felt. So, I forced myself to keep walking, to keep showing the house, even though every instinct in my body was screaming at me to get out of there. But the laughter only seemed to get louder, more insistent, as if whatever was causing it was trying to get my attention. I could feel my heart pounding in my chest, my palms sweating with fear. I tried to focus on the task at hand, to ignore the laughter and pretend like everything was normal, but it was no use. It felt like I was being watched, like there were eyes on me from every corner of the room. I finally reached the last room, the master bedroom, and that's when things took a turn for the worse. As I stepped inside, the laughter stopped abruptly replaced by an eerie silence that was almost deafening. I looked around the room, searching for any sign of what could have caused the laughter, but there was nothing there. It was just me, alone in this empty house, with no explanation for what I had just heard. I quickly finished showing the house and made my way back to my car, eager to get out of there and put some distance between myself and whatever was lurking inside that place. As I drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that something was still watching me, still following me, even though I was miles away from that creepy old house. I never did find out what was causing the laughter, and to be honest, I'm not sure I want to know. I was sitting in my living room trying to unwind after a long day at work, when the phone rang. I picked it up, expecting to hear a friend or family member on the other end, but instead, I was met with silence. I said hello a few times, but there was no response. Just as I was about to hang up, a voice spoke up low, almost a whisper, but filled with malice. At first, I thought it was just a wrong number or a prank call. But then the caller started talking about things that only someone close to me would know. Personal details about my life, my family, my friends, things that I had never shared with anyone outside of my inner circle. I felt a chill run down my spine as the caller continued to speak, their words becoming more and more threatening with each passing moment. They told me that they knew where I lived, that they were watching me right now, and that they were going to come over and confront me in person. I tried to reason with them, to tell them that they had the wrong person, but they wouldn't listen. They just kept repeating the same threats over and over again, their voice growing louder and more aggressive with each passing moment. I hung up the phone, my heart racing with fear. I didn't know who this person was or what they wanted from me, but I knew that I had to do something to protect myself. I called the police and told them what had happened but they said there wasn't much they could do unless the caller made an actual threat or showed up at my house. I spent the rest of the night on edge, jumping at every sound and constantly checking to make sure that all the doors and windows were locked. I couldn't shake the feeling that someone was watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. The next day, I received another phone call from the same number. This time, the caller was even more aggressive threatening to come over and hurt me if I didn't do exactly what they said. I knew I had to take matters into my own hands. I called a friend and asked them to come over and stay with me until the police could figure out who was behind these calls. As we waited for the police to arrive, I couldn't help but feel a sense of dread wash over me. Who was this person? Why were they targeting me? And most importantly, how could I make them stop? The police arrived a short time later and took a statement from me and my friend. They said they would do everything they could to track down the caller and put an end to their threats. In the meantime, they advised me to stay vigilant and report any further incidents immediately. 
Days turned into weeks, and the phone calls eventually stopped. The police never did find out who was behind them, but I was grateful that they had stopped and that I could finally start to feel safe in my own home again. But even now, years later, I still can't shake the feeling of unease that those calls left behind. The fear that someone out there is watching, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I was alone in my penthouse suite, trying to unwind after a long day of work. The city lights twinkled outside my window, casting eerie shadows across the room. That's when I heard it, the sound of someone pacing back and forth in the hallway outside my door. At first, I thought it was just my imagination, but as the footsteps grew louder, more distinct, I realized that someone was actually there. My heart began to race as I approached the door my hand trembling as I reached for the handle. I hesitated for a moment, my mind racing with fear and uncertainty. Should I open the door? Should I call the police? But before I could make a decision, there was a knock, three sharp raps that echoed through the silent hallway. With a sense of dread, I slowly opened the door, my eyes widening in shock as I came face to face with my neighbor, his eyes wild with anger a weapon clutched tightly in his hand. I took a step back, my heart pounding in my chest as I tried to make sense of what was happening. What are you doing here? I stammered, my voice barely above a whisper. He didn't answer. Instead, he just stood there, staring at me with a look of intense hatred, his grip tightening on the weapon in his hand. And then, without warning, he lunged forward, his eyes blazing with fury. I stumbled backward, my mind reeling with fear and confusion as I tried to defend myself against the sudden attack. But just as I thought all hope was lost, I heard a voice, the voice of another neighbor, calling out from down the hall. Is everything okay? They shouted, their voice filled with concern. In that moment of distraction, I managed to break free from my attacker's grasp, scrambling to my feet and fleeing down the hallway my heart pounding in my chest as I raced towards safety. I didn't stop running until I reached the lobby, where I collapsed in a heap, gasping for breath, my mind spinning with fear and confusion. The police were called, and they arrived moments later, taking my neighbor into custody and ensuring that I was safe. It turns out that he had been struggling with mental health issues for some time, and in his delusional state, he had become convinced that I was somehow responsible for his problems. It was a terrifying ordeal, one that left me shaken to my core. But in the end, I was grateful to be alive, grateful to have escaped with my life intact. And as I sat there in the safety of the lobby, surrounded by concerned neighbors and flashing police lights, I couldn't help but feel a profound sense of relief. I live alone in a high-rise apartment, and lately, things have been getting strange. It all started a few weeks ago when I began receiving threatening emails from an anonymous sender. At first, I thought it was just spam or some kind of prank, but the messages quickly escalated from vague threats to specific details about my life. The emails were unnerving, filled with personal information that only someone close to me would know. They knew where I worked where I lived, even details about my daily routine. It was like they were watching me, waiting for the perfect moment to strike. I tried to trace the emails, but every time I did, they led back to my own computer. It didn't make any sense, how could someone be sending me messages from my own email account? I changed all of my passwords, ran virus scans, even contacted the police, but there was nothing they could do. The emails kept coming, each one more menacing than the last. I felt like I was being watched, like someone was always lurking just out of sight, waiting for me to let my guard down. I started to avoid going out alone, always looking over my shoulder and jumping at the slightest sound. But no matter how careful I was, 
The emails kept coming, each one more threatening than the last. They knew everything about me, my fears, my weaknesses, even my deepest secrets. I began to feel like I was losing my mind, like I was trapped in a nightmare with no way out. I couldn't sleep, couldn't eat, couldn't focus on anything but the constant stream of messages flooding my inbox. And then, just when I thought things couldn't get any worse, I started receiving packages, packages filled with photographs, newspaper clippings, even items from my own apartment. It was like whoever was behind the emails was trying to drive me insane, to break me down until there was nothing left but fear and paranoia. I knew I had to do something, had to find out who was behind the emails before it was too late. But every time I tried to investigate, I had a dead end, there were no clues, no leads, nothing to point me in the right direction. I was running out of options, running out of time. I felt like I was drowning, suffocating under the weight of my own fear and desperation. But then, just when I was about to give up hope, I received a breakthrough, a message from the anonymous sender, taunting me with details about my past, my family, even my childhood. It was like a slap in the face, a wake-up call that snapped me out of my despair and into action. I knew I had to confront whoever was behind the emails, had to put an end to this nightmare once and for all. I gathered up all the evidence I had collected, all the emails, photos, and packages, and marched down to the police station, determined to make them listen. At first, they were skeptical, dismissing my claims as the paranoid ramblings of a disturbed mind. But as I laid out the evidence before them, their expressions changed from disbelief to concern. They promised to launch a full investigation, to track down whoever was behind the emails and bring them to justice. And for the first time in weeks, I allowed myself to hope, hope that I could finally put an end to this nightmare and reclaim my life. Days turned into weeks, and still, there was no sign of the anonymous sender. The police did their best, but without any concrete leads, there was little they could do. I began to lose hope, to feel like I was fighting a losing battle against an enemy I couldn't see or touch. But then, just when I was about to give up, I received a message, not from the anonymous sender, but from the police. They had traced the emails back to an old acquaintance of mine, someone I hadn't spoken to in years. It was like a punch in the gut, a betrayal that cut me to the core. But as the shock wore off, I realized that I finally had the answers I had been searching for. I confronted the acquaintance, demanding to know why they had targeted me, why they had tried to ruin my life. And as they confessed to their crimes, I felt a sense of relief wash over me, relief that I could finally put this nightmare behind me and move on with my life. The police arrested the acquaintance, and as they were led away in handcuffs, I felt a sense of closure that I hadn't felt in weeks. I knew that it would take time to heal from the trauma of the experience. I've always loved my modern condo. It's sleek, minimalist, and provides the perfect sanctuary after a long day at work. But lately, things have been off. It started with subtle changes, like the occasional creak of the floorboards or the flicker of the lights. I brushed it off as the quirks of living in a high-rise building, but as time went on, the disturbances became more frequent and unsettling. One night, as I was settling into bed, I noticed a strange fluctuation in temperature. The air suddenly grew stiflingly hot, causing beads of sweat to form on my brow. I glanced at the thermostat and was shocked to see that it was set to an impossibly high temperature, far beyond what I would ever set it to. Confused and a little unnerved, I adjusted the thermostat back to a comfortable level and tried to shake off the feeling of unease that had settled over me. But as the days passed, the temperature fluctuations became more pronounced. I would wake up in the middle of the night, drenched in sweat, only to find that the thermostat had once again been tampered with. I tried to rationalize it, telling myself that there must be a malfunction with the heating system or a glitch in the thermostat. 
But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that something more sinister was at play. As the weeks went by, the disturbances only grew worse. I would hear strange noises coming from the walls, like the sound of footsteps echoing through the empty rooms when I knew I was alone. At first, I tried to ignore it, telling myself that it was just my imagination running wild in the silence of the night. But the more I tried to convince myself that everything was fine, the more apparent it became that something was seriously wrong. One evening, as I was preparing dinner in the kitchen, I felt a sudden blast of hot air wash over me. I turned to see the windows fogging up with condensation, as if the temperature in the room had skyrocketed in a matter of seconds. I rushed to the thermostat, my heart pounding in my chest as I saw that it had once again been set to an impossibly high temperature. But this time, there was something else. Something written on the display in smudged letters that made my blood run cold. Get out. I stumbled back in shock, my mind reeling as I tried to process what was happening. Who could have done this? And why? But before I could come up with any answers, I heard a sound behind me. A low, guttural growl that seemed to emanate from the walls themselves. I turned to see a figure standing in the doorway, shrouded in darkness. For a moment, I froze, unable to move as fear coursed through my veins like ice water. But then, with a surge of adrenaline, I bolted from the room, my heart pounding in my chest as I raced toward the door. I didn't stop running until I was safely outside, the cool night air a welcome relief after the suffocating heat of my condo. As I stood there, trying to catch my breath, I realized that I had to get help. I couldn't go back inside, not with whatever was in there with me. I called the police and explained the situation, my voice trembling as I recounted what had happened. They arrived quickly, but when they searched the condo, they found nothing out of the ordinary. I tried to explain that someone had been in my apartment, that they had tampered with the thermostat and left a chilling message behind. But without any evidence, there was nothing they could do. In the end, I was left to pick up the pieces on my own. I moved out of the condo soon after, unable to shake the feeling of dread that had settled over me like a dark cloud. To this day, I still don't know what happened in that apartment. I don't know who was responsible or why they targeted me. I was home alone in my country house, enjoying the quiet evening after a long day at the clinic, when I heard it, the sound of scratching coming from inside the walls. At first, I thought it might be a mouse or some other rodent, so I went to investigate. I checked all around the house, looking for any signs of pests, but there was nothing. No droppings, no chewed wires or holes in the walls, nothing that would suggest that there was anything living in there. But the scratching continued, growing louder and more insistent with each passing moment. It sounded like whatever was making the noise was trying to claw its way out from inside the walls, desperate to escape. I tried to ignore it, telling myself that it was just my imagination playing tricks on me, but the scratching wouldn't stop. It echoed through the empty house, filling every room with its eerie sound. I couldn't take it anymore. I grabbed a flashlight and went outside to see if I could find anything that might be causing the noise. I searched the perimeter of the house, shining my light into every nook and cranny, but there was nothing out of the ordinary. No animals, no signs of disturbance, just the quiet darkness of the night. I was starting to feel foolish, like I was chasing after shadows, when I heard it again, the scratching, louder than ever, coming from directly behind me. I spun around, shining my flashlight into the darkness, but there was nothing there. Just the empty expanse of the backyard, stretching out into the night. I felt a shiver run down my spine as I realized that whatever was making the noise wasn't outside, it was inside the house, right behind me. I hurried back inside, my heart pounding in my chest, and started searching every room, determined to find the source of the scratching once and for all. But no matter where I looked, I couldn't find anything. 
It was like the sound was coming from everywhere and nowhere at the same time, echoing through the empty halls of the house. I started to feel like I was going crazy, like the scratching was driving me to the brink of insanity. I couldn't eat, I couldn't sleep, all I could think about was finding out what was making that noise. I considered calling a pest control company, but I knew they wouldn't be able to help me. Whatever was causing the scratching wasn't a normal pest, it was something else, something far more sinister. I spent hours scouring every inch of the house, tearing apart furniture and ripping up floorboards in a desperate attempt to find the source of the noise. And then, just when I was about to give up hope, I found it a small, hidden compartment in the wall, just big enough for something to squeeze through. Inside, I found a tangle of wires and pipes, but there was something else too, something moving, something alive. I reached out with trembling hands and pulled back the insulation, revealing a pair of eyes staring back at me from the darkness. It was a rat, but not just any rat, this one was different. Its eyes were filled with a malevolent intelligence, like it knew exactly what it was doing and why. I tried to grab it, to catch it and get rid of it once and for all, but it was too fast. It slipped through my fingers and disappeared back into the darkness of the wall, leaving me alone once again with nothing but the sound of scratching to keep me company. I knew then that I couldn't stay in that house any longer. Whatever was living in the walls, it wasn't going to leave me alone until it had driven me out completely. I packed up my things and left, never looking back as I drove away from the cursed place, leaving behind the scratching in the darkness and the fear that had haunted me for so long. I don't know what happened to that house after I left, and I don't want to know. All I know is that I'm safe now, far away from whatever was living in those walls, and that's all that matters. I was sitting in my city condo, enjoying a quiet evening after a long day at work when the doorbell rang. I wasn't expecting any visitors, so I hesitated before getting up to answer it. When I opened the door, there was no one there, just a package lying on the doorstep. I picked it up and brought it inside, feeling a sense of unease creeping over me. The package was addressed to me, but there was no return address. No indication of who it was from or why it had been sent. Curiosity got the better of me, and I tore open the package to see what was inside. My heart skipped a beat when I saw what it contained a photograph of myself, taken from outside my window. I felt a chill run down my spine as I looked at the photo, trying to make sense of it. How had someone taken this picture? And why had they sent it to me? I glanced out the window half expecting to see someone standing there, watching me from the shadows. But there was no one, just the empty street below and the distant hum of city traffic. I tried to shake off the feeling of unease that was creeping over me, telling myself that it was just a prank, that there was a logical explanation for everything. But deep down, I couldn't shake the feeling that something wasn't right. I decided to call the police, just to be safe. Maybe they could help me figure out who had sent the package and why. But when I picked up the phone, I hesitated. What if this was all just a misunderstanding? What if I was overreacting? In the end, I decided to wait and see if anything else happened before getting the police involved. Maybe whoever had sent the package would come forward and explain themselves, or maybe it was just a one-time thing. But as the night wore on, I couldn't shake the feeling of unease that had settled over me. Every creak of the floorboards, every gust of wind outside, seemed to fill me with a sense of dread. I tried to distract myself, turning on the TV and flipping through the channels, but nothing could shake the feeling that I was being watched, that someone was out there, lurking in the shadows, waiting for the right moment to strike. Eventually, exhaustion won out over fear, and I decided to call it a night. I locked all the doors and windows, double-checking each one to make sure they were secure, before heading to bed. But sleep eluded me, and I tossed and turned for hours, 
my mind racing with thoughts of who could have sent the package and why. Finally, as the first light of dawn began to creep through the curtains, I drifted off into a fitful sleep. When I woke up, it was to the sound of my phone ringing. I crockily reached for it, still half asleep, and answered it without checking the call or ID. Hello? I said, my voice hoarse with sleep. There was a pause on the other end of the line, and then a voice spoke, low and menacing. I told you I'd come for you, it said, sending a shiver down my spine. I dropped the phone in shock, my heart pounding in my chest. How had they found me? What did they want? I stumbled out of bed and ran to the window, but there was no one there, just the empty street below and the distant hum of city traffic. I felt a surge of panic rising inside me, threatening to overwhelm me. I needed to get out of there, to find somewhere safe where I could hide until I figured out what was going on. I grabbed my keys and my wallet, not bothering to grab anything else, and ran out the door, not stopping until I was halfway down the block. I didn't know where I was going, just that I needed to get as far away from that condo as possible. I ducked into the nearest coffee shop and collapsed into a seat, my hands shaking as I tried to catch my breath. I must have looked a mess, because the barista came over to ask if I was okay. I tried to explain what had happened, but my words came out in a jumbled mess, barely coherent. The barista looked concerned and offered to call the police, but I shook my head, not wanting to involve them unless absolutely necessary. Instead. I called a friend and asked if I could stay with them for a few days until I figured out what was going on. They agreed without hesitation, and I spent the next few days holed up in their spare room, too afraid to leave the house. Eventually, the fear began to fade, replaced by a sense of determination. I wasn't going to let whoever had sent that package scare me away from my own home. I went back to the condo, this time with a plan. I installed security cameras around the perimeter of the building, hoping to catch whoever was stalking me in the act. And sure enough, a few days later, the cameras caught something, a shadowy figure lurking in the alley behind the building, watching my every move. I called the police and showed them the footage, but by the time they arrived, the figure was gone, disappearing into the night without a trace. But even though they never caught whoever was behind it, Knowing that I had proof of what had been happening was enough to give me some peace of mind.